Madison. I am the Senior Marketing Associate at NBS um, Scientific. Um, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we will be going through a live product demo of the CXT 353 frozen sample aliquotter. Um, so shortly I'm going to pass things off to our friend Kathy Roche from Basque Engineering and Science, um, the manufacturer of this unit. Um, but before that, I'm just going to, again, go through the um, agenda uh, of the session just very quickly. Um, so Kathy is going to give a brief presentation um, about frozen sample aliquoting and uh, the unit itself. And then um, she will move into the, um, the demonstration, the live demo. And then we will end with um, a Q&A session. Uh, so throughout the presentation, I just ask that you um, all can mute yourselves if possible in Teams. And if you have questions, just type those into the chat. And then at the end, I will feed those questions to um, Kathy and uh, then she can answer any questions uh, that you might have. Um, if no one has questions, that's fine too. You can always um, contact us uh, via email or chat with us online, um, especially if you'd like to set up like a more personalized or um, custom demo that's more tailored to your application, totally fine. Um, so I think those were all of the announcements I had. Um, again, my name is Samantha. For those of you just hopped on, um, I am going to hand things off to Kathy Roche from Basque Engineering and Science now. She is the Director of Science and Quality. Um, so Kathy, feel free to take it away. Um, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you very much, Sammy, for the introduction. Like she said, I'm Kathy Rush from Basque Engineering and Science. I'm going to give you a short presentation. And we're going to do a demo and then open it up for questions and answers. So it's going to load. All right, here we go. So <clears throat> I'd like to start off with giving you some thoughts. Have you removed a frozen bio sample from the minus 80 freezer, thawed the sample, aliquoted it out into either cryo tubes or a 96 well plate, and then take that parent sample and replaced it back into the minus 80 freezer? Have you obtained a piece of your frozen sample for analysis using a knife or maybe another type of cutting device? And have you physically been hurt or cut during this process. And last but not least, I want you to think about all those pieces, frozen pieces of sample that you've now obtained. Are they consistent in size? Is it a true representative of the entire sample? So if you have a yes to any of those questions, then frozen sample aliquoting is the place for you. The technology is something that we would like to explain on how you can avoid the answers to those three questions that I just told you. Because we all know thawing is just not cool. Okay, the frozen aliquoting technology, what is it? Frozen sample aliquoting, it's coring frozen human biofluids or tissue for improved sample quality and integrity by stabilizing the lay biomolecules for analysis and eliminating that horrible freeze-thaw cycle that plays havoc on our data. Our patented technology uses nuclease-free coring probes to extract out aliquots from these frozen biosamples, depositing them into cryotubes. The samples are maintained at a temperature at minus 80 or colder at all times, ensuring both the parent and the aliquot samples are preserved throughout the entire process with the end result of high quality, contamination-free samples for use in downstream assays. So why? Why frozen aliquoting? Well, 
It avoids the analyte degradation due to the freeze-thaw cycle that can bias our data in a downstream analysis. It generates and distributes small uniform volume specific aliquots in a controlled and efficient manner. It stabilizes labile molecules for analysis, such as your nucleic, nucleic acids, metabolites, and proteins. It preserves the integrity of the parent sample and aliquots without contamination. Aliquots thaw faster than a full sample, improving sample consistency and reproducibility of data and results. And not least but not last, allows for reaccess of that frozen sample. What's the benefit of frozen aliquoting, you ask? Biosamples and maliquots are maintained at or below my, minus 80 until the downstream analysis is performed. Our instruments have flexible, interchangeable sample fixtures to accommodate a variety of different sample types and tube sizes. Our one-time use nucleated-free probes eliminate any type of cross-contamination of the sample. Our instruments have targeted lasers, which allows for specific selection of samples to be extracted for analysis. Multiple cores can be obtained from the same sample. Most importantly, it's time-saving for improved workflow with the 60-second coring cycle of sample versus thawing, aliquoting, and refreezing. It eliminates that manual slicing or cutting of tissue. It eliminates handling of raw feces, and it limits aerosol exposure. Okay, so we offer two different types of instruments. Our first instrument is our Benchtop CXT-353 frozen sample aliquotter. Its main features is it has the ability to core various frozen material. The patent technology generates frozen aliquots anywhere from five microliters all the way up to 300 microliters. The removable sample fixtures and adapters, or removable sample fixture adapters fit any different type of tube types. The removable destination carousel can fit many different tube types for your destination tube for your aliquots. It's chilled by liquid nitrogen and it keeps your deck temperature at below minus 80 C. It has a protective safety shield designed to protect the user and the sample. It holds up to six to 12 pre-chilled probes and saves up to 20 different protocols. The CXT-425 is our next series up. The 353 is basically tube-based, so it does not aliquot out or does not aliquot into 96 well plates, but the 425 does. So the 425 is still bench top, but it's a little larger footprint. So what does that offer? It has the patented technology, just like the 353, to generate aliquots anywhere from five microliters to 300 microliters. It can core out of and deposit into 96 well plates or SBS format and can be used and done on either the source, which holds your source sample, or your destination side of which you now deposit your extracted cores into. We can design custom source racks and trays of any options. As you see in this photo, what looks like, I call it the hockey puck. We designed this for a pharmaceutical company who's not doing frozen biofluids, not doing frozen feces, and is not doing frozen tissue. However, they do their buffer studies where they make the buffers and they freeze them and they freeze them in a hockey puck shape. So we can design and take any type of material that someone is frozen and create the application for it. The 425 is also chilled by liquid nitrogen. The deck temperature as well is way below negative 80 C. 
This instrument holds up to 24 pre-chilled probes and again stores up to 20 different protocols. It has an easy pull down, pull down, protective glass door with a locking mechanism instead of the shield, the protective shield that is on the 353, this one has a locking door. So how do we get between our five microliters and our 300 microliters? Well, we have our single use coin probes that are nuclease free and they come in three different sizes. We have our little baby ones, which are 1.5 millimeter diameter in the tubes, but they are 42 millimeter in length. The next size up is our 3.0 millimeter OD tube size, and again, a 42 millimeter length. Then our largest one is a 3.0 millimeter OD for the tube, and the length is 57 millimeters in length depending upon which size coring probe you use, will dictate how large or how small of an aliquot you can extract out. What else do we have? So we have accessory kits we sell. We sell. So, so for, for, am I echoing? So for the tissues, we create a kit that fits on your cryostat. It comes with a cryotome, it comes with OCT for mounting tissue, it comes with our plastic tissue trays that are designed by us, it comes from a pedestal that goes on the instrument, so you can go from mounting your tissue to putting it on a cryostat, to creating your slides, to staying your slides, to then taking your tissue, putting it on the 353 and extracting out a extract of that actual tissue to do more analysis on. The lower photo shows you all the different types of tubes that we currently have adapters for. I can't show you all. We have at least at least 20, 25, but this just shows you the variety of tube types that we currently have for our adapters. Okay, I've talked about <clears throat> the instruments, the technology, why we want to do frozen aliquoting, what the benefits are, and what we offer. So now I'd like to do the demo. So I'm going to get out of my presentation. Okay. All right. Here is the CXT-353. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get it to the point where everybody can see. Can everybody see that? So it looks what I'm pretty good, to, yes. Okay. So what the main it the main parts is there's a porthole in which you will pour your L into. We have a chilling rack, which is removable, like I said, which holds our probes. So for on this model, it holds up to six. It has a rack which can hold your tube types. And it has your destination carousel which holds your tubes of which you're going to then extract into your frozen cores that you've taken from your parent sample. The beauty to all this is that all of these are interchangeable. We can make these nests fit any tube size, and they're easily removable for easy cleaning. Okay, so here's our sample stage. I am going to put my sample into the sample fixture. This is, we, we use Sculpey clay. So this is our pretend feces tube. I put it into my sample fixture. I tighten it up so that it's very tight. And now what I'm going to do during the demo is I'm going to now fill it with liquid nitrogen. I'm going to put on my gloves. And I'm going to pour.
I don't know if anybody had a watch, but I literally filled that up in three minutes. And I'm gonna top it off just a little bit more. It's a five liter tank, but you fill it up to four liters. You can also fill up the instrument using a doer, not necessarily a hose like I do with a password LNC tank. You can go fill it up with a doer and then pour it in and fill it that way. There's a temperature gauge and a percent fill of the tank on the um, software on the menu screen. Uh, just for time, I'm trying to get this done. It's at 100% and we're at negative 70. So we wait, we can wait a few more minutes to get it to minus um, 80, but because of time, I'm going to go ahead and core it. So what you do, can everybody see, is you, you load your coin probe into the spindle you can then put it in front of the sample we have a laser i hope everybody can see the laser the laser is used to spot where in the sample that you want to core so I'm going to move it around, lock my sample holder, lock my handles. I'm going to put the coin head back into position. I'm going to put the safety guard down. I'm going to hit OK, and my coin probe will go down into my sample. Now this is a 15 ml Nalgene tube, and to get a really good representative of the sample, you want to core from the top all the way to the bottom. Then you switch it over to the destination tube. You press OK. The core will go down, and it will expel out your core. Now this is the thing that I'm not so coordinated with. Um, can you guys, uh, wait, where am I, right, left? Um, go up a tiny, there, there you go. go. <laughs> so there's my core in the tube, and if I put it into my Weibo, Well, it's clay, so excuse my hands. There it is, there's my frozen core. And that's it. You would release the probe. 
You're done. As you can see, my I'm at negative 95. So it literally took eight minutes to get it from room temperature to minus 80. And you could see that I did a core in 60 seconds. And that's it. That's my that's my physical demo. Do we want to open it up to questions? Sure, we can do that. Um, why don't we wait a minute or two? Um, if anyone has questions, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, we'll wait a minute or two to see if anyone has questions. Um, and then if not, then we'll sign off for the day. Is there anything else, Kathy, that you think would be good for people um, to know? Um, I don't know. It, it, um, it's pretty easy. It's a lot of fun. Um, or I guess, like, can you give uh, more examples of like the different kinds of samples that people can core? Okay. Um, good, good question. All right. So uh, most people that have this sample are people that are working with uh, frozen tissue. Uh, we have a couple of instruments at a um, cancer institutes that are looking at the tissue, you know, tissues that come in um, and they're looking for the cancer. Um, we have one customer that is using it for HLA, HLA um, tissue typing. We have one account that is in the animal um, industry that are coring animal tissue and feces because they are doing their analysis in order to create better dog nutrition for those animals that have certain diseases, um, like, like um, Cushing's. Um, we have people that are using it for bioanalysis, so they're using it on their serum, their plasma. Um, we had one person actually coin brain. We have a brain tray. Um, they were looking at the gray and the white matter um whole blood we can do whole blood urine breast milk uh feces so we look at bioanalysis molecular pathology biobanking and microbiome which seems to be the hot topic with the biobanking what's nice about this is biobanks use it as a qaqc so for instance, a PI comes along and says, I need 25 samples of people with high liver uh, enzymes. So before they start to take out 25 samples and send it, what they do is they can use our instrument to take out a sample, analyze it, a little aliquot, that sample is still viable before they send it out to that PI for their research. Um, the, that's the beauty of the instrument is that there's no thaw. It's a one-time use with the coin probes. You go into the sample once, you um, extract out your aliquot. You can, you can create whatever size aliquot you want, but we do recommend that you core from the top to the bottom to get a good representative of that sample. Then you throw that probe away, and then that way you eliminate any cross-contamination. Great. Um, we do have one question. Um, so um, is there any way to maintain sample sterility and does the core stay frozen? Yes. So the, so the entire deck of the instrument is at minus 80. And that is why you pre-chill pre the probes as well. They're also at minus 80. So throughout the whole process, there's no thawing because the probes, the sample, and the tubes are all at the same temperature, and they're all at minus 80 or below. In that 60 seconds of where you're coring into the sample, you're extracting out, it is not long enough for that sample to even thaw. Um, we've been doing this for nine years, and we've never had an issue because 60 seconds is really fast. Sterility as far as the sample, yes, you take that sample that is in the tube covered out of the freezer, you put it on the instrument or you put it in a bucket of dry ice next to you. You do one sample at a time. 
you take the top off. The nuclease-free probes are cleaned, packaged, and bagged in nuclease-free bags. We test to make sure that they are RNA, DNA clean. So then you go into, you take them out, you put them in, you insert them, you put that cover down immediately. Therefore, there's no contamination. Some people even put it in a bio hood. So I have an instrument. There's my instrument in the bio hood for even for those who need to do, you know, where they really want to keep everything nice and clean. It fits nice and neat into a class two bio hood. Great question. Anybody else? Don't be shy. <laughs> All right, that looks like it might be our question for the day. Okay. Um, so um, again, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we're, we're really excited to show off this innovative product to all of you. Um, if any other questions come up in the next few days or weeks or whatever, um, feel free to send those to our inbox, which is info at nbsscientific.com, or you can chat with us online. Um, if you would be interested in setting up a more personalized or like in-depth demo um, that's more tailored to your own specific application, feel free to reach out to us about that as well. We'd be more than happy to, again, um, have Kathy hop on a call and um, go through your specific workflow and application. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much. And thanks to Kathy for your presentation and for um, going through the live demo for us. Um, I meant to mention this at the uh, beginning, but we did record this session so that we could send you a follow-up recording um, of the webinar so you could check back um, and watch the demo again. Um, yeah, I think that was all that um, I had for today. Kathy, did you have anything else um, that you'd like to add before we finish? Um, so I, I think maybe one question that might be on people's mind is how long does it stay cold? Great question, Kathy. Um, so, <laughs> so when you fill up the instrument, obviously depending on your laboratory temperature and the humidity, if you fill it up to 100% and you get it to your working temperature of minus 80, on average, it will stay cold for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes before you fill it back up. Um, the the way that I do it is that um, you don't fill it up based on what the tank tells you the fill level of the liquid nitrogen. You fill it up once you see that your temperature is at negative 80 or below. That's on the screen. So this, so at all times you see the fill of the LN2 in your tank and the temperature of the entire deck of the instrument. Um, so you don't fill that up until you start to fall below that minus 80. So I'm going to say about an hour and a half approximately before you're going to have to fill it up again. But remember, it's a five liter tank, but you're only filling it up to four liters. You're going to you're going to um, we left a gap so that you can't overfill the instrument with liquid nitrogen. That's it. Awesome. Great. Definitely good to know all of that for sure. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again. And thanks to Kathy. Um, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.